Welcome to a recently fun employed episode of We Only Look Thin. Oh I am Catherine Weigel. I've lost 145 pounds. Holy cow. And with me today is... Donald Weigel. Hello. Hi, and I have lost about 100 pounds. How are are you? I'm doing great. We are going to talk about uh, part two of our Ask Me Anything from Reddit today. Yes, we are. And uh, before we get into that, though, you uh, opened the episode by saying that it was uh, recently fun employed. I am. Uh, what is that about? I did. Well, you know how we talk about mindset and habits and stuff like that. I I <laughs> vaguely remember us saying things like that, yeah. Well, we uh we over the last 5 years have worked really hard on our mindset, on habits, on boundaries. Oh yeah. That's all that stuff we've talked and about in those other like 159 episodes. Yeah, and it's super fun and easy to talk about mindset and habits uh when you're employed and making money, which is super great and fun. Uh but uh last week being employed and making money is super great and fun is what we're saying well no we talk about the seasons of our lives changing yes and we can talk about it hypothetically but then when seasons change abruptly with a phone call from your boss yeah maybe it's not as fun as we make it out to be on the podcast. Yeah. Now, just a little backstory. Um, I have uh, been with Catherine. We've been married almost 23 years. Yeah. And um, I have known her for even longer than that. And she's been unemployed for a total of like two, two months. months. <laughs> yeah. That entire time. So that's like 25, 26 years. Like she's and been on. Now, in. My job, I, I work on TV shows and... Uh, He's I've, unemployed all the time. I'm unemployed. Yeah, every, every time a season of a show ends, you know, I there's usually a gap and I'm unemployed for a little while before the next show starts or the next season of the show or whatever it is. But this is really unusual for Catherine. Yeah, I uh, started working uh, in the White Collar America, uh, Ring Around the Collar America, uh, when I was 18 years old. Yeah. And then uh, moved to California, unemployed for two months. Ring around the collar, America. Is that even still a thing? Like ring around the collar. You know what it is. I haven't that seen a not. ring around the collar commercial in a really long time. I know. I guess things are ringless now. But yeah. uh, I was unemployed for two months when I moved to California, and it was the most stressful. Like Don's like, just relax, enjoy your time, and I was like, there is no fun in that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very nervous. I must have a job right now. Yeah, I have zero chill. So I have uh, been employed for uh, just. I just celebrated. 23 years of employment yeah. with my company, and then I got the pink slip call. <laughs> Celebrated <laughs> by severing all ties with them. Uh, Catherine wanted to continue her relationship with the company, they, but the company disagreed. <laughs> they, uh, what is it called? Uh, conscientious uncoupling? Yes, <laughs> they, yes they, sure. They uncoupled with me, and I was told they that... They uncoupled. <laughs> I love it. They uh, they no longer wanted that for me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so here's the thing. Seriously, uh, I I have basically been expecting to be laid off for 23 years. Like, yeah, Catherine was in the printing business, and yeah. so as you can imagine, you know, for for <laughs> the entire like 23 years she's been employed there, we've been expecting the business to crumble and for her to lose her job. So it's just sort of like. You know, it's eventually you get into this boy who cried wolf situation and you're like, well, this is this it. Is She's it. definitely like your company has like merged and yeah. gone through like, I don't know how many rounds of layoffs yeah. in the last 23 years. You so, know, it's probably been like a dozen or something. Well, and it's kind of like in The Princess Bride when the Dread Pirate Roberts tells uh, Wesley, he's like, all right, great job today. Probably going to kill you in the morning. Right, like, right. I have felt like that for 23 years. Yeah, I it's had, a great way to live. I had a, uh, a pretty... <laughs> intense boss for the first 18 years where I basically every day thought I was going to be laid off. And then for the last number of years, I've had a really lovely, supportive boss, super great guy. But every time the phone rings and it's him, I'm like, this is it. This I'm is getting it. a call. Yeah. And I'm, I've come into this position where I'm like, I was expecting it on a basically a daily basis that to find out she was going to lose her job to the point where I was like, they're never getting rid of her now. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> this is not. Nope. She's there forever. She's going to retire there. And uh, then we yeah. got this phone call. But the the thing with a life event is that you don't actually know how you're going to feel about it until it happens. Like you watch a, a scary movie and you're like, oh, I would never go down a dark alleyway. That's like, right. And then you're down a dark alleyway. And then you'll see how you really do it. But honestly... You don't know how you're going to feel about something until it happens. And on this podcast, we talk, like I said, a lot about boundaries, habit change, mindset. And when my boss said, like, your services are no longer required, he didn't yeah. actually say that. <laughs> <laughs> you could have said that. I didn't know. I wasn't on the call. But when it happens, you know, like there are people I know who have been laid off and I'll be like, okay, focus on your mindset, focus on your habits, focus on whatever. Yeah. But, you know, and then you get the call and you're like, what is happening? My life is over. Yeah. But he said I was laid off and I was like, wow, huh, okay. And I think I really surprised him by not crying or yelling or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okie dokie, goodbye. He, he actually called me later and was like, <laughs> thought you were a little too happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> want to know what was going on. But I was actually really happy about it. And now I am in a position where I have a little bit of a cushion. Donald has a job. I have, you know, health insurance. So it's not, I am not a single person who's losing a job without any other benefits or, you know, unemployment and that kind of thing. So I know I'm still in a special situation, so I'm happy about it. But honestly, Donald and I have been talking about our position with We Only Look Thin and Walt Place, W-O-L-T Place, yeah. our online support group for a number of years. And we've been saying, okay, well, when you get laid off, not if, then you can do well full time. Yeah. And I think that, you know, one of the the morals of the story is if this had happened five years oh. ago, you know, before we were in the mindset that we're in now, before we even started down this road of of getting our health and fitness together, getting our mindset together, I think it would have been potentially disastrous. Yeah. You know, it we we would have been scrambling, we would have felt like we had no safety net and I think that just all of these things that we've put into use in order to get our health and fitness together apply to other parts of our lives and that we know that this is not a disaster. It's just, you know, when it, it's such a cliche, but when a door closes, another one opens. And this is a real opportunity now for Catherine to just be full time doing Walt Place and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. And I think, you know, like I said, not knowing how you're going to feel about something, I am really excited about the opportunity to grow Walt because I've wanted to do it for such a long time and haven't been able to because of the constrictions of my actual day job. That yeah, is yeah, me. yeah, yeah. So now being in a position, uh, I'm a week out of working full time and still sort of getting used to it. But I know that I have like, okay, I've been talking about get on a schedule, do, you know, have habits in place, set boundaries with your time. And being able to invest in that part of myself would never have happened if I hadn't built up these habits over five years. And we have done episodes uh, like uh, winter is coming. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know we need to plan for it. And being in a position where I have the support of Donald and already have all of these habits in place, I'm in such a better position than just eating about it, which is what I would have done five years ago. Now I'm, Absolutely. Ex I'm excited about it. So uh, we, in the coming months, are going to be growing Walt Place, um, adding additional features and benefits to that. And uh, I'm super excited about it. So. And so, you know, look, this this isn't supposed to be a commercial for Walt Place, <laughs> but if you have been on the fence about joining, you know, now is a great time yeah. to check it out. And usually we save this for the end of the episode, but... You know, you can join with no risk. It, you get a complimentary three-day trial when you sign up for a one-month membership and a complimentary seven-day trial an entire week to check it out if you sign up for a, uh, a three-month membership. And so you can, you know, check in, see if you like it. If you don't, there's no risk yeah. and you can back right out. But uh, we think you will like it. Yeah, and I, you know... Again, my ability to participate in Molt Place is based on my my day job. But now this is my day job. So we're going to be adding a lot more in the coming months. So I'm really excited to see uh, what it's going to turn out to be. So uh, so that's uh, that's life and it's happening. And it's also 
great information to share on a podcast. I just feel like this is additional fodder to keep us going. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I bet she faked her job loss. <laughs> I, I think we can. Uh, we'll check in with you in the coming weeks. We dear, will and, and check see, in with and me. see how your fun employment <laughs> is going, and uh, see if you're uh, if you're yeah, putting your money where your mouth is, so out, to speak. I still have no chill. I'm st- Don's like, hey, why don't you sit down and watch TV? Yeah, I'm like, no. I can't sit. Down. Instead, you know, she's been like cleaning the grout with a toothbrush <laughs> and things like that. So yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see how what happens over the coming weeks. Yeah. So- All right. So um moving on now. Uh we last week, um a couple of weeks ago, we did an Ask Me Anything on the Reddit group R Lose It. And uh we have done this a couple of times now and really enjoyed it. And um, we did a little bit of a deep dive into the, a couple of the questions that we were asked last week on last week's episode of this show. Um, and so we're going to do it again this week. You know, I'm not the world's fastest or best typist and trying to answer the questions, you know, I, I sometimes can be a little briefer than I would like, but if I just have to talk on this podcast, I can really go into depth about what I'm talking about. So that's part of, uh, of what we're doing here. Um, I will link to the AMA so you can go read the whole thing if you're interested. Um, but today we're going to ca- uh, tackle a couple of the more important questions that we were asked. I don't know, not important, but uh, interesting <laughs> questions we haven't really tackled on this show before. Uh, and the first one, I think, is very, very important. Possibly the most important <laughs> question that we've ever been asked on this show. Um, and uh, I'm going to butcher the name of the person who asked us. Everybody's got a a name on Reddit. They don't use their real name. This is uh, Metzonderos. Uh, I think. Does that sound about right? Sure. Met Zondaros, who, by the way, Met Zondaros, according to their profile, has lost 100 pounds wow. also. So congratulations, congratulations if you're uh, listening to this. Uh, so the uh, the question is, if you released a rap album about weight loss, what would be the hit single? Oh. This is really important and hard-hitting stuff right yeah, here. Yeah. So, I mean, immediately, without pause, Snacker's Delight would be like the yeah. hit single. Yeah, and and I had a really hard time coming up with anything, but for years and years I have said that if I had a rap name, it would be Nilla Wafer. <laughs> that that is definitely a, a good one. I have a number of like we prep for the podcast. Yeah. We go in depth, but I have also come up with so many different rap our band names. And I'm going to share them with you now. I can't wait because all of this is a surprise to me. And just in case you're going to steal mine, I thought of one this morning, which mm. was straight out of the kitchen. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Well, we were going to be featured on Yo! MTV Snacks. So <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to... So I have so many different things. We're just going to... I'm going to go through them and Donald's going to be forced Why to Why don't you wrap them? <laughs> no. No, we're not that doing I will that? Not. Okay. No, but uh, there's a number of different things. Um, your rap name could be Sir Snacks a lot. Um, <laughs> it really could. So I, and I have a, a dueling uh, option for our band name, uh, Run KFC. Or... <laughs> oh my God, so good. Or Sit DMC, whichever. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> Okay, you could be LL Cool Ranch, <laughs> Snacky by Nature, uh, The Dog Pound Cake, uh, D- D- DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Personal Pan Pizza, <laughs> Taco Bell Biv DeVoe. Oh my God. Uh, let's see. Uh, a Tribe Called Quest Bar. <laughs> And I could be Debrat Worst <laughs> or Debrat De Worst. Debrat Worst. <laughs> yeah, oh my so there's God. so many little, I said little Funyun uh, on the AMA, but yeah. little Debbie just comes out like she's just yeah. automatically. Yeah, L I L apostrophe Debbie. Yeah, yeah, House of Champagne instead of House <laughs> of Pain. Uh, so there's so many different options. If you have a great rap name, a great band name, a great snack song, uh, let us know about it. That was all like. Catherine was, we were getting ready for the show and she was just furiously making notes. <laughs> and I thought it was all about the more serious question, but it turns out she was just no. writing like 
names of rap songs. Yeah, there are a number of others, maybe lesser known uh, MCs from the 90s, but we'll just, we'll save those maybe for another time. But if you have a great rap name for yourself, you let us know. These you, are important, hard hitting questions. Please, please let us know. You can tweet at us or email us at weonlylookthin at uh, gmail.com. And Donald, I really appreciate your laughter. I feel like that was actual laughter. Oh, not, that was. Not canned laughter. No, that was. So. That was all new, uh, new information. All right, so <laughs> moving on to the actual uh, serious, real question of the show. Um, we were asked by Cozy Sinethseat. Um, I'm butchering that name again uh, also. He or she says, I know you're not pediatrician slash yes. child <laughs> professionals. Very true. But as parents, do you have advice about helping school-aged children develop healthy habits to get to a good weight? All right. So first, we're going to start with a big, giant disclaimer. And if there are kids in the car or listening, maybe you want to not listen with them just in case, because we don't want to uh, tell you how to do anything. Yeah. and uh, But we one of the reasons we have not uh, tackled this topic before, at least I don't think we've talked about no, it really. No, we've, we've been asked before, but I don't think we've addressed it. Um, is that we are definitely not uh, child experts. We're not uh, child psychologists, anything even remotely similar. So please, you know, consult an expert. What, what we are, though, are parents who um, have had weight issues our entire lives, and we've tried really hard not to give our kid the same weight issues that we had. Well, and I think uh, if you go back to the earlier episodes, we don't talk about it too often, but we actually adopted our daughter when she was eight years old. And uh, she, is, she is biologically related to Catherine, um, but she is not biologically related to me. And so she really has a certain level of control with food that Catherine and I do not have. And she has thus far at age 15 not really had any weight issues. But, you know, we're not sure if that's genetics. Nature or nurture. <laughs> or, or... or anything that we've done. So it's possible that um, that it's nothing we've done. I'd like to think that some of the things that we've done have definitely helped. And one thing that we do know, however, that I know for sure is there were things that were that happened to me when I was a kid that really messed me up in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes to food and and to weight, and I've tried really, really hard not to do those things with our daughter. So like Donald said, we didn't have those formative toddler years to shape her food choices. So she sort of, you know, when she came to us <laughs> in from a stork, <laughs> right? That's yeah, yeah, kids... yeah. The stork dropped her off for yeah. sure. Um, but when she came to live with us, I went out of my way to make like special charming meals, like cucumbers shaped like caterpillars oh, and yeah. like bento boxes and lots of embarrassing things like that. But I was also secret eating all of the food scraps that she wasn't seeing. And yeah. it was becoming a parent was very stressful. <laughs> like it was a deep dive into me secret eating and drinking to cope with the stress of it. So you can go back and listen to our early episodes where I kind of explain that more. But it it was two years into her living with us that I finally started getting my healthy habits in place. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, we're not even <sighs> – we haven't even been leading by example the entire time that she's lived with us. And hopefully we have been for the last five years, but, um, you know, we, uh, we're not sure. But the main thing I think that we have tried to do, and one of the things that I know really messed me up as a kid is, uh, we do not use food as a reward or as a punishment. Right. Like we don't, if she doesn't do her homework or something, we don't, take away a treat and if she you know does something we don't give her a treat it it's very much you know food is food and food can be enjoyable food can be nourishment but it's not a punishment it's not a reward we've tried very hard not to put any value judgments on like you've been good so you get this you've been bad so you don't get this you know that kind of thing because i feel like that really messed with my head as i was growing up and even well into adulthood yeah and i think too you know in in the really big picture as as we look at this and i and this this is true for adult relationships just even for yourself is 
we try to look at what kind of a lifestyle we want as a family. We don't single out any of us as a like who deserves what or portions or anything like that. I mean, I think we can see one person with a weight issue or us not wanting to pass on something to a child and put different standards on one person over another. Like, well, you know, Donald can have three slices of cake because he's a fiddo, but you only get one, you know, fun size Snickers because you're fat. Like, can you imagine saying that? Like, okay, well, you don't deserve the big slice. You only get this, but the rest of us are going to enjoy it because you have a problem. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like, I've, I've tried really, really hard not to ever say anything like that to her. And really, I've tried never to discuss her weight with her at all in terms of, you know, I, I've never been like, you better watch yourself, you know, if you don't, if you keep eating You're never treats. gonna lose weight if you... Uh... Yeah, when I was growing up, I, I you know, people, relatives, parents, uh, siblings, uh, grandparents, like, would discuss my weight with me all the time. Like, oh, if you keep eating that, you're gonna... And then they would still have, you know, two liters of soda everywhere and... And all the desserts and the chips and, and all of that. And then get upset when I wasn't eating enough, you know, when I would turn down food at the table. So it was it was a whole lot of mixed messages that we've tried really hard not to give our kid. Yeah, and I think, you know, that that lifestyle, I came from a very sedentary family. We didn't go on family walks ever. Yeah. You know, if, if there was a parent doing something, they were sitting on a bench and I was doing something with friends. It wasn't a holistic family type thing. And I think for me, you know, and l- let's just be clear, our daughter is not a super active no. kid. She actively really doesn't like physical activity. Yeah, like really, really uh, rebels against us. One thing, you know, we don't use food as a reward or a punishment, but we do make her go on walks with us you know even during the pandemic we like force her to go outside with us and go on walks and just at least get some exercise well but i mean to that end we don't say like you're coming on a walk with us or no, you don't no, get not video like games that. yeah but i think as a as a lifestyle as a family in the last five years we have gone out of our way like we when we started walking it was just walking her to school and back yeah. You know, that's where we started. And then we said, hey, let's walk to the library instead of drive. Let's walk to Starbucks instead of drive. And we've really made that like we've got a mall a half a mile from us. And we'll say like, OK, let's go to Joanne's Fabrics. We're going to walk there. Yeah, she really likes going to Joanne's Fabrics. So, you know, that's a good way to get in some steps is walking over there. And it's it's like a mile away. Yeah. So having a family destination where you always go for a walk or there's a li- like a little library in our neighborhood where we'll walk or in the before times when restaurants were open, we would walk to our favorite breakfast spot instead of drive because that at least gets in some physical activity. So we've made walking like she just sort of expects that if we're going to do something, we're going to walk somewhere. Yeah. And she even calls us out like, oh, you're driving there? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, what are you yeah. doing? So it's kind of a family joke, but it's what we do as a family. It's not you have to do this to stay fit. It's we as a family do this to, just because it's part of our active lifestyle. It's not a punishment. It's not a reward. It's just what we do. And another thing that I think we do, or or maybe more precisely don't do, is we don't force her to be part of the clean plate club. Ugh. I really think that mess with my head. Uh, I know I keep saying mess with my head. I don't know a better way to put it. It, it you know, really... I got this really terrible worldview that I was a bad person if I didn't eat all the food that was put in front of me. And the whole, like, if you don't finish your main course, you don't get dessert thing. And so I was just, you know, being like pushed into overeating so that I could have, um, so that I could have dessert and constantly being told that there were poor children that you oh, know, were yeah. starving and they would love to have this food. Like, how could you just not eat it all? Like I, and it really, really messed with me. And so I I equated being a good person with eating a lot of food. And, you know, a bad person is a person who doesn't eat a lot of food. And it just really, you know, messed with me well, well into adulthood. Well, and conversely, on my end, I could not get enough food. I always was thinking about my second portion before I had finished my first. Yeah. But I think the difference in the clean plate club, uh, (laughs) (laughs) M-I-C-C, um, is that I was given 
certain vegetables that I hated, like yeah. Brussels sprouts, and I was told I couldn't leave the table until I finished them. And we don't do that with our daughter. If all she eats is raw cucumbers or cherry tomatoes or red pepper slices, and that's all she wants to eat, I do not force vegetables on her that she hates. And yeah. I think that that for me was, you know, that led to secret eating or hiding food. So for me, it's not the clean plate club that was the issue. It was like, okay, if Catherine likes carrots, she's getting a bucket of carrots. Like, uh, amazing. Well, and the other day, you know, we one thing we do do is encourage her to eat the vegetables before she fills up on whatever the main course is. Yeah. But, but it's not a reward punishment situation. But one thing you did very recently, you found a new broccoli recipe. Like she's not typically like a big broccoli eater. I did. I uh, am suddenly obsessed with uh, Samin Nosrat, who is a food writer. Uh, I love her. If she's listening, she's amazing. <laughs> but she talk- she wrote a book called Fat, Salt, Acid, Heat. And she talked about just adding flavor and seasoning to things. It's it's less of an um, a cookbook and more of a just like how to use food book. And I was not really salting broccoli. Like I I was my, yeah. you know I was steaming it, which isn't super flavorful. But she was in a recent episode of her Netflix special. She was like, add salt and parmesan to broccoli, and I put some on our daughter's plate, and she. Ate it, like she gobbled destroyed it. <laughs> it. It was amazing to watch. And so I think, you know, even with your vegetables, you know, look, I'm not saying when I grew up, when I was growing up, I didn't know you could have cauliflower when it wasn't buried in cheese sauce. <laughs> Like, I'm, I honestly didn't realize that you like served it any other way. So I'm not saying that, but adding actual flavor to your vegetables uh, can be a good way to get your kid to eat them. Yeah. So uh, it is a continuing experiment just because something doesn't work once doesn't mean it won't work in the future. But definitely, you know, I grew up with you have a salad with dressing. Magically, our daughter doesn't really like sauces or dressings it, or gravy. Yeah. For, I, for me, food is basically like a sauce delivery system. Like it's an excuse to put some sort of sauce on it. Yeah. And you know what? And I had to get past that. You've got to have a salad. Well, she doesn't like lettuce. Okay. Well, just give her a bowl of cucumbers chopped up. She ate it. Amazing. That's a salad. Yay. I yeah, don't exactly. have to foist like, well, it's not real if you don't have dressing on it. Like, Who needs dressing? But it, it was hard for me to let go of that. And another thing that we do is we sort of uh, – we don't announce it exactly, but we do pairing with our yeah. kid. We've talked about – we did an episode called Pairing is Caring where you just – you know, if there's some – if there's a treat that you really like, like Catherine will only have a bagel out when she goes and gets a haircut. Like it's just a a, a, a pairing. It's not, it's not something – she doesn't allow herself to have at any other time. And – we kind of uh, have done this with our kid. Like, we don't keep a lot of soda in the house, but we do buy those, like, sort of smaller glass bottles of Coca-Cola, and she gets to choose. She can have one on Tuesday or Thursday, and she can have one a week, and it's her choice which day she has it, and she picked the days, and she gets that one. And it's not a matter of – there's no option of her having them all the time. It doesn't become a, a regular routine habit. It's just because it's a Tuesday or a Thursday. It's not a reward. It's not a punishment. It yeah. just goes with that day. And then another thing that we do, um, she gets a muffin on Fridays, uh, you know, during school. We would stop by, you know, less now because of the pandemic, but we would uh, stop by. The, there's a local, you know, muffin donut shop, and we would just get her. It's just a Friday thing. It's just what happens so that it's not an everyday thing. Right. And another thing with that Friday is is that we – sometimes she doesn't want the muffin in the morning. She wants a Starbucks. So we have a very big this or that rule in the house. And it, it goes for us too. It's not just about her. It's she can either get an afternoon frappuccino or she can get a morning muffin. And she decides which she's going to get. Another thing that we do – and we do this again as a family. It's not a value judgment just on her or whatever. Even if I want something more – I still stick to the rule. So we have a get a tall drink 
rule about yeah. Starbucks. If you're getting a sweet beverage, it's a tall. It's never a grande or a venti. If she wants just black iced tea, she can get that at any size that she would like without sugar. But we just make it so that there's no negotiation about it. It's just you can either get a muffin or a Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. It can't be a drink and a, you know, if she gets the unsweetened iced tea, then she could also get a cake pop or whatever, but she can't get the cake pop and, you know, a Starbucks drink that's basically a milkshake. Most of those Starbucks drinks are basically milkshakes. Like we don't let her have both when she goes out. And she knows she she has some agency in the decision then. She can choose one or the other, but not both. Right. And it's never, well, you know, Donald gets the extra large Frappuccino because he's a grown up. It's we all stick sort of to the same rules. So she's not being singled out. We also do that in the before times when people went to restaurants, we would share a bucket of fries and not get each individual, you know, servings. We as a family, we've talked about this before, we make choices in advance about how we're going to get takeout or go to a restaurant. Okay, well, tonight is special and we really know that we want to get milkshakes. Yeah. So we're not going to get the bucket of French fries. We're just going to get the milkshakes. Okay, we're going to McDonald's, which we actually did last Friday. My last day of work celebration was a Happy Meal. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But she and I both got Happy Meals. It was still about 500 calories, which is a fine like lunchtime treat but we got happy meals we did not get sodas we did not get the milkshakes that go along with it if we do want to get milkshakes or an ice cream cone we will make a special trip just to get that and not get the food because we don't need all of that at once and we know like and maybe this is the next thing we talk about we talk about the way food makes us feel yeah not the value judgment on it like i feel tired and bloated and I get acid reflux. If I get a giant Whopper and a supersize this and an ice cream, it just makes me feel sick. So we talk about that, not like, well, I'm going to get fat if I... Yeah, we don't preach to her about it, but we we talk about how it makes us feel. And I think, luckily, she has a little bit of built-in, um, you know, she is able to kind of regulate when she's full. She definitely has a sweet tooth, like she leans sure. towards sugar, 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 but... When she's eating things, she knows when she's full and she stops. Like she can eat part of a treat and and you know actually not eat the whole thing, which is completely foreign to me. I know. Um, but we, you know, I think part of that never like forcing her to clean her plate thing pays off in that regard. Well, and we too, you know, for us, we stick to single serving portions of things. We never set out a bowl of chips or a bowl of popcorn or a bag of whatever. It's yeah. always single serving. But I remember when she was little, and she would have. Do uh, you remember what friends are who come into your house? Do you remember when that was a thing? I vague. That's as foreign as walking. That's a long time ago. That's like walking to a gate at the airport to wish someone goodbye, having a friend over. Almost. But I remember when she moved in and she had a friend over and they were playing video games and both of them forgot their ice creams or their their popcorn or whatever. They both kind of ate half and were like, oh, we'll just eat it later. And I was like, what kind of bizarre world is this? The only reason yeah. I went on play dates was for snacks. Like, okay, well, you know, I know that uh, Vanessa's mom has uh, the cinnamon rolls, so I'll definitely go over there. But she seems to be able to self-regulate better. And I don't make a big deal out of it. Like, aren't you going to finish your blah? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't call it out because I don't want to put those old food stories on her like I had. You know, and another thing that I almost forgot to mention, even though it was my entire childhood, (laughs) is is it came up recently on Facebook. I was in a group and someone was talking about their child's weight. And it's a very sensitive topic. We haven't discussed calorie tracking or Weight Watchers or anything like that in any of this, which I, I don't think is a healthy method. Yeah. But one thing that I saw in all of the comments, nobody brought up the idea of secret eating which a parent can do everything that they can to ensure that their child is getting wholesome, full meals or whatever. Yeah. I started secret eating at age four. Yeah. And I kept it a secret until age 45 or something like that. 
my parents never called me on it, but I, I mean, we've talked about it before. I binged on Nesquik and milk. I, the first time I figured out I had 50 cents and walked past a Dunkin' Donuts on the way to first grade, yeah. I would get a donut every day. I would scrounge money <laughs> yeah, 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 like a fiend and buy a Dunkin' Donuts. I would eat other kids' food at school that they didn't want. I stole candy from my second grade teacher who I yeah. loved, but I figured out she had a candy stash i sold can- like literally every day stole candy from school and for me it was usually like huddling inside the open refrigerator door and just like pounding whatever was in there like just eating and eating yeah i would go uh, into my room to play with a loaf of roman meal bread yeah and just eat Ramen meal bread <laughs> all the time. Nobody ever called me on it. And I think for as much as parents can say, oh, they ate three square meals a day and they only have this one snack, I went out of my way to find extra food. I lied about the food that I was eating. And that secret eating, nobody ever called me on it. Um, maybe they didn't notice. Maybe they thought other people in the house were eating it. Yeah. But I went out of my way from age four to eat in secret, eat at other kids' houses. I know people don't do that right now, but I kept it a secret forever and have never talked about it. And if your child seems to be out of sync, there might be an issue with hiding food. Yeah, and like if it seems like, you know, you don't see them eating that much and you're feeding them, you know, healthy, reasonable meals and they still have a weight issue, it could be just that they're secret eating on you. And look, I don't know what the answers are to that. I think you need to seek out a medical professional yeah, and, a, and get advice on it. There might be something behind all of that. Yeah, I exactly. love the taste of food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was well, well deep into middle age before I kind of, you know, in air quotes, fixed my secret eating issues. So well, I don't know how to do it <laughs> to a kid, but at least be on the lookout for it if, if you can see the warning sign. Well, and two, our daughter would go to camp in the summer and every Friday they would go on a field trip. And we would give our daughter $20 for souvenirs, yeah. a, you know, a balloon, a glow light, whatever. And she, every single time, would buy, like, a five-pound bag of toffee. Like, every right. single time. And we're like, why am I giving you $20 for, like, just plain sugar? And time after time, she would just keep doing it. I'm like, why don't you buy a souvenir? And she'd be like, I just bought pixie sticks for everybody on the bus. Like, And so she really likes sugar. The one thing, and I, I, like I said, we don't have an answer for this, but one thing is I've really been honest with her about my secret eating. Yeah. And if you think that your child might have an issue with that, Again, I, I don't know that anyone ever going like, hey, where'd the Roman meal bread go? It just would leave me like, I don't know. A, a robber came in and took it, the hamburger. Yeah, day. and it would sort of increase the shame and right. increase the the notion of – and like I don't know if I was ever even called on it, but – I think that it would have made me better at hiding it. <laughs> well, know? and people did say like, oh, well, you're a kid and you don't get as much as your stepdad or what, you know, <laughs> somebody would say that. Who? I don't know. But I learned to secret eat. I learned to not tell people what I was doing. And then again, as a grown up, people would be like, but well, Catherine, all I do is see you eat salads. I don't know why you're overweight. I'm like, I don't know either. So I didn't even know secret eating was part of my problem for, you know, decades. But I'm honest about it now. Hey, daughter, if I go into the kitchen and I'm quiet, you probably know that I'm secret eating. So call me out. And we kind of make it lighthearted. But yeah. she's much better at being honest about her food choices. The other day she actually said, I'm not going to eat anymore because when I – in the past, when I've eaten this entire thing, I end up getting acid reflux and it makes me feel sick. So I'm going to stop now. And I was like, oh, that is a good thing to yeah, know about yourself. Yeah, that's a yourself. very mature thing for a teenager to realize. But I do think that me being honest with my tendency to secret eat has made it less taboo. And Donald talks about it as well. So we're much more open about it. And I, I think that that openness with our own struggles and then, like we said, leading by example, I think is a really good thing to do. But it was surprising to me in that Facebook group that nobody mentioned the idea of secret eating because that – 
is something that, like I said, I started doing at four years old. So, uh, so it's just something to consider. Again, please talk to a professional because we are not, uh, it's, it's a big psychological issue. And unfortunately, food tastes really good also. So that's my problem. Well, and I think that may be the last thing that, that we touch on and it is that we try and lead by example these days. And we certainly didn't lead by example when she first moved in, but we are open and honest with her about our struggles with food. And we talk about when we mess up with food, um, not mess up, but we talk about when we go off of our plan. We talk about if we have a binge eating episode, you know, and we're very open and honest, but we try and lead by example and, you know, watching what we eat, doing our exercise, you know, we try and hit our step goals every day and we try and include her in those discussions about those things. And I think that trying to, you know, lead by example, hopefully, and we won't know if a lot of this has worked until she's fully an adult, um, but hopefully leading by example will will make her want to get involved more in fitness when as she gets older. Yeah. And we, you know, and and leading by example means we just don't have juice in the house. Yeah. We don't have soda in the house other than the one. Yeah. Like, and we do it as a family. It's not just about her. There are, there are easy ways to cut out those low hanging fruit, so to speak. Yeah. So think about the ways in your house. There are certain things that maybe you can cut out and make a special, you know, once a month we get, you know, take out or, you know, we have soda only when we go out to the movies or something like that, because having it as your family lifestyle as not a value judgment matters and focusing on how food makes you feel really matters. We go out of our way to not talk about our weight. We don't talk about our weight, but I think, you know, just by talking together as a family about strategizing about food like the super bowls in a week yeah so we've actually just started talking like "Ooh, what are we gonna get what are what are our choices talking in advance about it like there are times when she will come in and just say something that we've said on the podcast you know just like hey didn't you say that you weren't gonna have treats after <laughs> yeah, yeah, 8 yeah. p.m like hey what are you doing in there and it's it is a conversation it's not you know there's never any you know, value judgment on it, but being open and honest as a family, our family goals matters. And we joke too, like, you know, we're doing this. We don't want you to have to roll us around in wheelchairs in five years. For like, sure. And we make it kind of light and jokey. And part of that conversation is about modifying. We talk about modifying all the time, M- modifying exercise to make it accessible. Oh, yeah. Speaking your truth about like how something makes you feel. Like I said, she is not super active, but we talk about how it feels to do strength training, how it feels to modify, how great it feels to modify a recipe yeah. to make it a little bit healthier. And it's not um, it's not a trick. It's not a, well, we're doing this just for a short amount of time. It's taking, like Donald said, agency in your life and making things work for you based on where you are right now. And that is so different than my parents may be wanting to put me on a diet or making me join Weight Watchers or whatever it's, which happened. (laughs) Um, It's just about our active lifestyle as a family. So what can you do as a family to create more activity, natural activity, make rules around the sweets and the treats that you do have in your house. Think about what you can do and do it as a family because it's not just one person's problem. It's the whole, you know, it's, it's a holistic approach. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of families, thank you so much for being part of the We Only Look Thin family and uh, listening to this episode. Uh, if you uh, like this episode, you can find all of our episodes wherever you found this one. And as always, you can also listen to them at our website, weonlylookthin.com. Yep, they are listed there. You can join the conversation uh, by following us or adding us. Is adding a bad thing? Or <laughs> Sure. It's uh, good. It's bad. It's all of you those. Can, uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at weonlylookthin. You can email us at weonlylookthin.com. 
emilylookthin at gmail.com. If you have any topics you would like to discuss with us, any tips or suggestions you would like to share about what you've done with your family to make it successful, that would be super duper great. It sure would. And speaking of things that would be super duper great, when you're at our website, uh, you can, we mentioned it uh, early in the show, you can find out more information about joining our support group at our website. Just click on join our support group. Did we say what it is exactly? Well, Place, it is an online Facebook-based accountability group for women. Uh, It's not a diet plan, but it is a support group for uh, habits, accountability, and just being super honest in a way that you might not be able to do on your public Facebook page yeah and you can get some uh some you know sort of one-on-one time with uh with Catherine weigel <laughs> uh fitness uh internet celebrity yeah oh and you can if you want to uh to do us a favor uh you can go to apple podcasts and rate and review us uh we're up to about 410 star reviews now we love them and it helps other people find the podcast as well the more ratings and reviews that we have and it makes us feel good you want us to feel good don't you yes you do <laughs> So if uh, at this point you still don't know the difference between a Nilla wafer <laughs> and a Lil Funyun, <laughs> just remember that Catherine and I are an, an inspiration. inspiration. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program.